Good morning, everybody. It is Wednesday. I'm feeling much better, so I thank you, Lord, for that. I'm going to go ahead and say my prayer and then get into what I want to discuss real quick and be out of here for right now. Got a lot to make up work on after being out for a day. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you so much for allowing us to be able to wake up and see another day. I personally thank you for the healing that you're doing on my body. I know that it would be back at 100%. I know that you call all bodies to work in conjunction, the organs inside, to work in conjunction to make sure that we're all healthy and able to withstand what comes against us in this life. We pray down for those who are sick, who are not feeling up to 100%. We pray that there isn't any negativism that's around them, anyone talking defeat against them. We pray that they will pick up your word, Lord, and use the healing scriptures to be able to put positive thoughts in their head and have faith that you, you the one who created this body, will align this body back up. God, the subject that I'm going to talk about, I pray that people will be mature enough to be able to either watch it and answer in a mature way. And if it's triggering, Lord, we pray right now that you assist them with the emotional and the mental capability of dealing with the triggering thoughts that they are having and that they will seek help either through you or through one of your representatives, such as a counselor. God, we know that this world can be tiring, it can be frustrating, and it can be scary. But what I do know is that you, Lord, will be there with us every step of the way, regardless of what's going on, and that we need to lean on you for our protection, for our guidance, and to assist us in all things. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We lift you up and we magnify your holy name. In all these things, Lord, we pray in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Sorry, y'all. Sometimes I get off and never mind. Anyway, um, it's kind of so um, sobering what I want to bring up this morning. And I want to preface it with this. I said it in my prayer, but... The topic that I want to bring up is something that's in the headlines, but it can be very triggering for a number of reasons. And so what I'm saying to you is, if you see or if you've heard and you know that it's going to be something that will affect you, please don't watch it. Because it may be that you're not prepared to deal with whatever is in the video that's going to trigger you, or you're in the process of dealing with it. Or, you know, some people never want to deal with things, certain things. But it is about the Sonia Massey shooting. Um, I want to ask you, as mature men and women, to watch one of the videos, the body cam footage. Uh, of course, it would go out right now. Um, there's many, many that you can watch um, as far as the body cam footage is concerned. There's a lot of them out there. Um, it took me till today to be able to watch it. I have seen um, people talking about it briefly, but I didn't want to watch it until I was in a good enough headspace. I didn't want to be feeling bad and then watching it. Here's her dad. And you know he got being crump, so you know. Being crump is becoming like the um Martin Luther King of lawyers. And so <clears throat> it can be triggering. Um a quick synopsis of the situation is this young woman here. And to me, it seemed like she might have had some mental issues going on, something. She does mention about being out of medication or something. So it could be, 
And I hadn't watched the video about the dad. I don't know if he's going to mention it, anything, or if somebody else will mention it. But it seems like she might have had a mental issue going on and may have been off her meds. And, you know, that's what kind of triggered all this, where she might have heard something for real or she might not have heard something. I'm not really sure. But the conversation that she had with the police officers was a little odd for me. There was something something cognitively going on with her, but nothing that should have scared the police. But they come to her home because she called in saying that she heard something outside her home. So they came to check it out. In the process of letting her know that they checked out the area and everything, um, they asked for ID because there was a car parked in her driveway with a busted out windshield. And when they, you know, wanted to know whose it was, she said she didn't know. So it was two police officers. So one goes in the house um, and wants her ID. The other one calls in the tags on the car and he never says anything like, you know, hey, the tags are in your name or whatever the case may be. But he comes in, but he does say to her, you know, do you know anything about the car windshield? And he said, well, do you know any damage about the car? And she said something about some dents or something like that. And then he says something like about the windshield. I can't remember if she said she knew about it or she didn't. But see, even right there, first she said she didn't know about the car, and then it was she knew about the car. So there was something going on with her. Anyway, in the process of all this, she had a pot of boiling water on the stove. What it looked like to me was, because I do this, my water gets hot, but not as hot as I want it to get. So sometimes when I'm mopping the floor, cleaning the counters or stuff like that in my kitchen, or I'm going to mop the bathroom, I will take water and boil it and use that to mop and stuff and also to clean my mop hot water you know to sanitize it with some vinegar something like that but there was a mop bucket right there in front of the stove now i can identify with that because maybe it's something culturally i don't know but um i could see that she might have been boiling the water to maybe mop or something i don't know but um, while she was in the process of looking for an ID, the other police officer was saying, hey, you know, you got water on the, or you got a pot on the stove, you know, you need to turn it off because we don't want to be here for a fire. And I think she said, yeah, you're right, blah, blah. So she goes over to do that and the sink is next to the stove. So she's turned around, she gets pot holders, she picks up the pot, She's turned towards them on her way to the sink, and the police officer that sent her over there says something like, um, to the point of her maybe throwing the water on them, and she was like, I rebuke you. And he was like, what? She says, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. And so he gets mad and says something like, I'll shoot you in your head, shoot you in your face. He said something about shooting like three times, if I'm not mistaken. Then the other police officer who's standing there just proceeds to shoot her in the head. Now, I don't know <clears throat> what somebody who don't go to church may think of that statement or someone who may not understand that. I don't like, again, I don't know if that's a cultural saying in the black church. I don't know. But rebuking somebody, what she's pretty much saying is that why would I put hot water on you? She's like, I'm coming against what you're saying. I don't believe. When you rebuke somebody, you're coming against what they're saying to you, that you push back on what they're saying. So she's saying, nah, I push back on the fact that you think that I would pour hot water on you. First of all, you asked me to come over here and turn the pot off. Now, in hindsight, maybe she should have just turned the pot off and just left it there. Or pushed it to another eye for it to cool down. But not really thinking. She just took the pot of water. And was going to pour it in the sink. And literally gets shot three times in the face and the head. Pretty much blew her face off. Head off. 
I want you to watch this because in the climate that we're in now, and like I say, if you can watch this and be able to give a mature comment, please do. But I'm wondering what your thoughts are on this because I was going to actually post something yesterday stating that every five and a half hours in the United States, a black woman is killed. 96% of those killings are done at the hands of a black man, but the other 4% are not. And I would put this in that 4%. The thing is, because I'm a black woman, when we're killed, abused, and all those things, nobody cares. They don't. It's so many that are never ever talked about and it has to be something this horrific for it to even get any attention and yet even in the cam footage the police officer lies he says that she was coming at them with the pot of water and she wasn't there was nothing to escalate in the situation I mean, there was nothing where it looked like anybody was mad at, any, at anybody. She called for help. They were wanting her ID. She was looking for it. When they stopped her and said, hey, you know, you got the, war, the, the pot on, there was nothing to escalate the situation to where she, felt the, she should have felt the need to pour hot water on them. I don't know if they misread the situation because of her behavior. I don't know if it was a cultural difference with not understanding what she was saying, but there was a major issue in communication here. And in the climate that we're in right now, coming up on an election year, when I put out there about the 2025, you know, one of the things embedded in there is the fact that regardless of what a police officer does, they will never be charged. So if that was in play right now, those two officers, well, at least one officer shot, the other one drew his weapon, his gun, but he never did anything. And he went to the car that was supposed to get his medical kit, which I'm like trying to figure out, you know, pretty much blew the woman's head off. How you, how you gonna do some damage control? Um, and then he came back and said that he wasn't gonna use, he wasn't gonna waste his medical kit and the other guy was sitting there with a towel on her head and he was getting a pulse. I think he pretty much did it because he didn't want to see what he had just did. So he wrapped her head up with the towel. That's my thought on that because they knew there was nothing that they could do. So, um, but if that was in play, these two gentlemen would get off. I know one is fired, the other one's up for fire, and both of them should be fired, because as my partner, if I was a person's partner, oh, hell no, that was too extreme. I would not go down with that. And then, of course, the person could be scared that the person might shoot them. I might have kind of tried to defuse the situation then, but I definitely would have reported it right away. But I just wanted your thoughts on that because of the fact that, um, like I said, I was getting ready before I got sick to post something about how many black women are killed daily. Daily. It went from six hours to five and a half hours every day. And nobody has anything to say about it. Most of the time, somebody lies about it. Most of the time, it's just swept underneath the carpet except for the family and friends that love the person nobody gives a rip i'm concerned about that those are the things that i never hear the politicians talk about like what type of laws are you going to put in place to protect women i'm talking about black women because i'm a black woman but all women have issues with not being protected and so my thing is, what laws are going to be put in place to protect us that people should know that if you do something, there's going to be consequences, like a femicide law, 
We don't have that in the United States. Anyway, I'm up to my 15 minutes. If you want to, you know, if you don't want to, that's fine. I'm just putting that out there. One last thing that I want to say. I created this channel years ago just to see if I could. It was right before COVID. I was retired and I had a lot of time on my hand and I was just like, oh, I had just found YouTube, really just had found YouTube. And I was like, well, let me see if I can do that. That was the only purpose of me creating this. And then I thought, well, if I'm on here, I might as well be able to bring some enlightenment, some education, something like that. And I was practicing with the little videos that I started with, trying to see, you know, get me used to doing it. I really wasn't talking about too much of anything. And then COVID came, and I just kind of, you know, if I did it, it might be every three months. It might be six months. I mean, it was not something I was invested in to say until I found Miss um, Lady. And even then, I wasn't invested in it like that. Sorry, y'all. I just was um doing it, and if somebody watched it, fine. And then Aaron's B did a shout out for me and I started getting more people. And that's kind of how this all got to be where we're at now. So before all that, I had 27 subs. And I had people, matter of fact, I had people making comments that I didn't even know they made comments because I didn't even know where the comments was. You know what I'm saying? I never went back to watch the videos. Even now, I don't go back to watch them. So if there's errors in the videos, I don't know because I don't go back and watch them. I don't. After I say what I say, I just upload. And me coming to that, the whole purpose of me saying that little piece is the fact that I'm not sure what some people come to people's channels for. The things I say about McNasty, you know the parts that are serious when it deals with mental health because that's a big issue for me as far as, you know, educating people on getting help. And then the other stuff is about the con manipulation and everything. And I try to make it funny sometimes. So it's not a serious thing where everything needs to be critiqued because I am not trying to be a professional YouTuber I'm not trying to use this as my source of income. If I was, by now, I would have gotten me an intro. I would have tried to get somebody to edit it for me, make things look better, insert things versus me just pulling it off the TV, things like that. I would have done that. I'm just a raw, take my phone, videotape something from the TV, and make a commentary from it. And that's it. Just say how I feel, my thoughts on it. So my thing is this. If you're coming to the channel expecting something um, show-worthy, you're not going to get it. And if you're coming to the channel to try to see if you can find me doing something wrong, <laughs> that's a good possibility. I may say the incorrect word. I may say something about one thing or another. But my thing is this. Nobody cares but you. And I've tried to be nice about this whole thing. I'm not really sure what your issue is with me. I, I really don't understand. Because I don't see you doing that in other chats. So my thing is this. If you don't like my content, if you don't like how I talk, and if you don't like the fact that I make mistakes, then don't watch. I don't even... I can't even think about how many channels there are out there just talking about bull crap like I do. Go watch them. Because if you come back with it, and I don't like to do this, but I am going to block you. Because I feel like you're trying to have a personal attack against me when it should not be. It's very lighthearted and it's supposed to be funny the majority of the time. 
I don't know why you're taking this so seriously where I have to do everything perfectly correct. That's part of the it being funny. So I just wanted to throw that at the end. For those who might have a comment to this, thank you so much. And for those who chose not to, thank you so much. Otherwise, you guys have a wonderful Wednesday, and I will talk to you later. Bye.